Meet Terrence Pop in person at the CME. Go to MasculineExcellence.com to get your tickets today. This is The Briefing. I'm George Bruno, and I'm talking with Terrence Pop. Welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing? Doing good, doing good. Well, I jokingly said uh, that you had to make everybody cry when you were doing your presentation. It touched people. Well, um, it's a very, uh, it's a serious subject that nobody talks about, and it is ignored by the mainstream media, and it touches many men, many families and virtually every man out there who's gone through a divorce has had that those thoughts run through his head so of just wanting to off themselves yeah yeah i mean the uh i mean it's really overwhelming Mm -hmm. it really is Uh, when you're looking at uh losing everything and being made homeless i mean because that does happen quite often to guys who get divorced Happened to me. Yeah, definitely. A lot of guys just are not coming back from that. I was coaching a guy, and I was talking to him about, uh, I always check and see when I coach guys. I try to get their temperature for where they are uh, with suicide. Mm -hmm. I do homicidal ideation, suicidal ideation, and then over the years I've learned to gauge their passive suicidal ideation so number one no i don't want to kill anyone no i'm not going to kill myself but and i said okay something's going to come down the pike now he says if i could just like press a button and i could just disappear and go away i would do that so i my notes were that's passive suicidal ideation. He's not, he doesn't have a gun in his hand. He's not making a, a rope, you know, kind of thing. Well, I've been but there. it's there. I've been there. But it's there. It's just wanting it all to go away. Yeah. And here's another one. Um, and I, I'm guilty of this one. Uh, I keep wanting karma to get even for me. Ah. Yeah. I mean, I would love to hear that my ex wife is a glory hole attendant. Yeah. But that would be hilarious. Just kind of like the uh, universe evening the score or something yes. like that, right? Or, you know, you know, she got, apparently she's, you know, HPV because she, it's a high penis vagina and that yeah. catches up to you down the road. Yeah. And you'll rot from the inside out. I don't know. I'm, yeah. just, I'm just gleefully waiting for that to happen. <laughs> I know it's terrible. No, it's not. It's not terrible. You know, but the thing is this. You're mentioning something that has gone through the head of every man who's been through it. Yes. Every single one. They're like, ah. You know, because listen, I mean, you get divorced, they take away your kids. I mean, and and it's just an unbelievable amount of pain that that guy gets put through when that happens. And, you know, you, it's just instinctive to, you want payback for pain that's put upon you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a Dalai Lama. And I'm not, you know, I'm probably never going to find that inner peace. I'm a warrior. That's what I do. I fight, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You have a number that you talk about sometimes, and I mentioned it the other night, that 366 thing. Okay. That's 366 men who either contacted me I talked to him on the phone. They sent physical letters, emails, or comments that said my contact, my content kept them from killing themselves. Because the worst, another thing that happens when the, these guys are going through it, they feel like they're the only one this is happening to. And a lot of these guys are like, I, you know, I, I searched for divorce this, divorce that, and I came across your shit, and like for the first time in weeks, I was laughing. Yeah. The humor is a good tool. It's, it exists for a reason. My first thought is that's just the men who reached out to you. There's probably men who haven't really reached out to anyone yet but can claim that same thing, that yeah. your content really helped them. 
that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, I, I run a nonprofit. I'm, you know, I'm trying to fight for you know fathers' rights. And you know, suicide. If it came close to you know, claiming me, and uh, I buried a lot of soldiers and friends, either from suspicious deaths, accidental deaths, suicide. Which I think they, you know, yeah, you know how it goes. Well, what fall off the boat, drunk thing, like like yeah. we were saying, yeah, yeah, you know, suffocated in their cabin in the middle of winter because yeah. the chimney was clogged, and yeah. drive their motorcycle 160 into a viaduct, yeah, you know, fall down, fall off their bike in front of a truck, yeah, accident, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's that suicide clause in uh, a lot of um, life insurance where they won't pay. What most most people don't know, it, it expires like in 24 to 48 months. Mm-hmm. So if you have life insurance and you've had it for 15, 20 years, they're still going to pay on it. Sure. Just, you know, a sick, nasty piece of information yeah. that I know. Because yeah. yeah. I studied it. Yeah. We talked about the uh, men's rights activists uh, in the meeting that they had out in Chicago, and you said there's one coming up, a virtual one. Yeah, there's a, in vir- August? and I believe it's in August, yeah. and they want me to do another presentation, which I'm glad to do. And it'll yeah. probably be, you know, either I'll reshoot the one I did today or use the footage from today and send it to them. Yeah. I like the organization. I like them. Yeah. I like that Honey Badger live stream stuff i think it's important work yeah Yeah, i've been on their show uh, i think once or twice yeah 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 i think their uh their voice is important it's necessary well i mean i mean look if you're a man today and you're dumb enough to get married and i said it dumb (laughs) and you get married like literally you're giving us the state the power to ruin your life imprison you impoverish you and take away your house. Yeah. And it can be done at the whim of another human being. And it usually starts with, I'm not happy. Yeah. And because this person's not happy, I gotta live in the street. That's bullshit. So what if people want to spend the rest of their lives together? Do a non-state kind of thing? If they just want to have a little... I'm going to be honest, you know, uh, if that's what they want to do, yeah, more power to them. Mm-hmm. I more than likely will never entertain that ever again. Mm-hmm. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, if you haven't noticed when I walked in here, there was a fork in my back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right next to the, you know, the knives and shit. From the, yeah. You know, backstab. Yeah. So you just got to laugh, man. Yeah. But, you know, I'm writing books. I'm trying to help people. I'm doing my comedy. I'm pissing off the, the world, the globe. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I don't care. Your voice is important in the world. It's necessary in the world. What does the next five years hold for Terrence Pop? Well, you know, to be honest, I want to, like, start cranking out some more books. I got the process down. I just need to find a decent editor. Um, I want to actually have a presence across the internet on virtually all of the new platforms coming up because, you know, if they snuff me out on one, I pop up on another. Again, everything is war to me. So it's just a non-conventional war, Yeah, you know, and that's the way you have to, that's the way you have to wage it. Sure. You have to be such a raging pain in the ass that the other team gets frustrated and quits. Yeah. That's how it works. I wandered into the back of the room where you were speaking and the gal who is assisting the conference, she's in tears. And I'm like, what's the matter? She says, pop got to me. (laughs) So your message resonates with females too. It's not just a men's message. She was blown away. She was speechless for a few minutes. That's, I mean, I'm going to be honest, that, that uh, the, the Purple Hearts final beat was the first video that Blake and I did yeah. together, and he knocked it out of the park. Yeah. And it, I remember I watched it, I'm like, holy crap, this is 
I mean, it was phenomenally good. I'm like, you, you're my man. We're, yeah. we're, 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 we're working together. We're doing this. And I, I remember I told him I wanted, wanted to get into comedy. And he's like, oh, I don't know. You know, I'll do a couple. Because I was still, I, I, I was paying him. And uh, I did uh, the horse chick. Because apparently he had dated a horse chick. And I'm mm-hmm. writing stuff on the board. And he's standing behind me setting the camera. He turns around and he goes, were you standing in the room? Because, like, <laughs> I dated a horse chicken. Like, 70% of this stuff happened to me. It happened to you. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that was a great one, man. So there are some things that are consistent across the board with horse chicks. Horse chicks, crazy chicks. Um, like some of the women that like to get with a man and then totally isolate him from friends and family. I call that testiculus redonculitis phenomena. And I, I bust out their tricks and they, they hate my guts yeah. and they can never argue the point. It's always, you hate your mother, you hate your sister, you're gay, you can't get laid, blah. Yeah. Yeah. There's, they, they literally have no argument. Yeah, there's no argument. If And, and like I've had, I've tried to have discussions with them like, give me the studies and stats. No studies, no stats. You know, they pull that, you know, this is my truth. I'm like, no, it is your opinion yeah. and your observation, mm-hmm. but it's not the actual reality which truth comes from. Sure. They hate it when you tell them that. A couple of days ago, we had a talk, and you mentioned a term that I have never heard of before, and you explained it to me, and it made a lot of sense. The term was called administrative Violence. Administrative violence, correct. Explain that to our audience. Okay. Well, we live in a very litigious, bureaucratic network. And the family court system is just one cog in that, you know, clockwork of bureaucracy. So you can use those other bureaucracies to put pressure and, you know, Get, help get your way. I'm serious. I mean, I'm not going to go into a lot of details here because I mean, the sounds like lobbying. Yeah, I mean, part of it is like it's I mean, influential. Well, I mean, I, I have a section there: like how to wage war against judges. Yeah. Without actually without you know, raising a fist or yeah. doing anything violent, just using the bureaucracy of the system we have. Yeah. And even even if they shoot you down, but it'll still be on record. And it's legal and such. Totally legal. Yeah. And if they throw you out of, of the you know, county building when you're doing your research or whatever, you go to federal court and you say, hey, yeah. I'm being denied access to the courts in my area. And, yeah. and, and, and you can just be here. And you don't have to have a law degree to do it. You just got to learn how to fill out the paperwork and be willing to stand in the lines mm-hmm. and deal with the passive-aggressive bullshit. But it's administrative violence. Because everything is violence. Everything is war. If you can use it to cause fear, pain, or kill, it can be used as a weapon against you. Yeah. I.e., family court uses the love of you have for your children as a weapon against you. Yeah. That is some reprehensible bullshit, yeah. and that needs to stop. The best interest of the child. No, it's basically the best interest of the big wallet that they want because it's all money. It's yeah. nothing to do with kids. Yeah. I mean, 85% of all the kids in prison, you know, no father at home. You got the prostitution, uh, you know, the drug addicted. I mean, it just, the list goes on and on of bad outcomes of kids with no father. The phenomenon of the school shooter, I forget what the stats are. So like 80, 90% of them, you know, Broken don't, home. Don't have the father at home. And, you know, when, when I got divorced and I finally, you know, you know, it worked out for me, so I got to see my kids, you know, and I was in the Army at the time. I got stationed in New York State. Twice a month for five and a half years, I drove 571 miles one way to hang out with my kids. Mm. Drove two cars into the ground. And just to make that happen, I mean, I, we'd, I'd i filmed a lot of videos because I used the mileage to write off on my taxes. But, you know, I was eating one meal a day, saving up money because I was paying child support. I was poor as shit, eating beans and rice and doing... But 
I wanted to be in my kids' lives yeah. so they can have a chance at a good outcome. Sure. We'll see what happens with them. You know, they're pretty much adults now. I'm out of the picture for now because you know how that goes. Mm -hmm. But we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Yeah. I did the best I could so I could walk away from the whole thing going, I gave 110%. Sure. Whatever happens, happens. Sure. It is what it is. I remember years ago, I saw a bumper sticker that said, kids need dads, not visitors. And it's built into the language of the court system and the cust and custody and... Visitation. Visitation. Actually, what the heck is visitation? They replaced it with parenting time. Is that what it is? Okay. They chase it. But I mean, like I talked about this in, in, in my, my presentation, you, like you have your kids with you, li you're married, you're living with your kids, you know, 24-7, 365, life is golden. And then somebody's not happy and you see your kids two to four days a month. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, technically they're with you for two to four days, but the kids sleep half the time away. Yeah. So you have like, oh, you have a razor thin edge of time yeah. and then you take them back to the here. And it's literally like processing a death every single time. Yeah. That's why there's a lot of divorced men out there just incredibly depressed. Yeah. Because they're stuck in that death pain mind and they can't get out of it. And I, I'm guilty of the same thing. Mm -hmm. It took me a long time to like slay that dragon, man. Mm -hmm. That was not good. What's the first thing a man should do when he thinks about wanting to off himself? Well, first of all, uh, you need to keep the mantra in the back of your head, permanent solutions to temporary problems is never the answer, okay? And then I have an acronym called CHILL, which is calm, higher level intel intelligence, laughter, latitude, and live out of spite. Yeah, and I, hopefully, because I sat in on so many suicide stand-down briefings in the Army, and they were completely worthless yeah so hopefully this one will get out there and guys will see it and it, it can help more people yeah it can have any politicians reached out to you and said hey this is important work we need to get this out there no nah. they don't care why do you think that is because no, men are expendable yeah mm -hmm. what, do, what do you mean by that um they have absolutely no problem taking men from 18 to 26 drafting them, and sending them forward to die by the millions. Because at that age, you are completely expendable and replaceable. And that same mindset continues until forever. Yeah. I mean, you basically, you're married, you are a provider or slave you know, slaves are dispend are expendable. Yeah, it's plain plain and simple. Is there a model of relationship with a woman that a man that is a good model where he is not as vulnerable or not vulnerable at all? Well, I'm going to be honest. If I was good at picking that particular relationship, I would not be sitting here right now. So yeah. I am not qualified to, yeah. to give that answer. Yeah. And that's the honest to God truth. Yeah. You know, I can tell guys what to look for and what to avoid. But when it comes to like, you know, picking the right woman and this is what you're looking for. I'm not that guy. Yeah. That's not me. Yeah. There was a guy on YouTube who always talks about, nobody talks about the judges. He says, I never hear that word. I never hear the concept of, the judges in these cases. That's After talking correct. to you, you are the guy who's talking about that. You're yeah. the only one who's bringing that up. There's it's really no one else talking it's, about it. It's really simple. Um, you know, judges do get appointed, but sooner or later they got to run for election, right? Well, they're paid by tax dollars, so they're susceptible to FOIA requests. Yeah, and you simply. You know, FOIA request, all of the people who donated to that judge is getting elected, judge getting elected, 
And then you FOIA again for all of the cases that have been before that judge. And then you just go through the cases and you do some, some legwork. If there's any funny business or any uh, preferential treatment or he didn't recuse himself, you can uh, form formal. You, you can lodge formal complaints against that judge with the state. Now they probably won't go anywhere, but they're still going to be on the record. Yeah. And then this is this is beautiful. You still have the list of all of the case numbers that have been before this judge. You go to all of the people who got about bad outcome, put together a form letter. You know, maybe you get, become a notary so you can notarize it yourself. Sit down with all these people and go, hey, did, were you happy with what happened with this judge? Blah, blah, blah. Fill this out. We'll, you'll file a formal complaint. Before you know it, you can probably, it's easy to get 500 to 1,000 complaints. And even if they don't go anywhere, they're still on the record. Yeah. So then when that judge runs for election against another, another guy running, you give all that information to the new judge and you say, here you go. You're going to get elected, but just remember. I could fucking do this to you. It just takes the legwork. Show them the stack. Yeah. It, 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 and you know what? It's totally legal. It's above board. You might have to do some legwork. You know, I mean, if you have a lot of divorced fathers, fathers in a, in a county that are really pissed off, they can get together, and you can have like one guy, you know, every other month, you know, go there and do the legwork, and then you, you all work as a group. I mean, you could literally f flip the script and change all the judges mm -hmm. right there. It's not a class action lawsuit. It's a class action. Correct. And it, actually, it's not really a class action because they're not all, you know, joining together and say, you know, we, it's I oh, a yes. thousand times. Yes. I had a problem with this judge. I had a problem with this judge. I had a problem with this judge. And then we have a thousand eyes yeah. saying this judge is a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. Then you start getting you start getting some traction. Yeah. And I know they can hate my guts, I don't care. It doesn't bother me. It's all right. It's all right. Are you available to speak at different organizations on this topic? If people want you to stand on their stage somewhere, would you do sure, that? Sure, I'll do it, yeah. I'll okay. do it. I mean, listen, I, I I don't want what happened to me to happen to other people, right? Yeah. And if I have to like, you know, walk through glass and you know, pay the ultimate price, whatever that may be. So the guy behind me gets to raise his kids. Yeah. It's worth it. Sure is. Because it, I wrote a book, The Warrior's Way and the Soldier's Soul. And one of the things I mentioned in there, there is no happy ending for heroes. Yeah. It just not, it doesn't exist. Yeah. So be careful when you like decide to raise your hand, take a step forward because it'll get damn expensive real quick. Yeah. Yeah. How can people find out more? You have a YouTube channel, a website. Well, I run redonkulous.com. I also run uh, secondclasscitizen.org, which is a valid 501c nonprofit. Uh, you, you can find those websites online. Um, I do have several you know, YouTube channels, Redonkulous Pop, Terrence Pop, and Grunt Speak. And we are on... Uh, 11 platforms across the internet. I don't remember them all, but uh, I have I have volunteers that upload and do stuff for yeah. for the organization now. Yeah, that's great. Because that's the way it is, man. That's great. If someone wants to reach out to you personally, can they do that as well? Yeah, you can reach me at redonkulous12 at gmail.com. You just put it right out there, didn't you? No problem. I I spend about two hours a day answering emails and redonkulous12 at gmail.com. Correct. There you have it. That's fantastic. You put yourself out there. Well, I mean, this is my face, this is my name, and it's been that way since the very beginning. Yeah. From the very because and if they want to dox me, that's fine. I don't care. You just Google my name. Yeah. I mean, I have like 30 some odd pages out there on the internet and yeah. five or six of them hate my guts. And that, yeah. That's fine. Yeah, that is fine. You're not doing your job if people don't hate you. Just remember that. I think you're right about that. I think that comes with the territory. Yep, it does. Yeah. It does. And, and I, I do the comedy thing and the way it works, if it's wrong or ridiculous, if it's wrong or ridiculous, it's ridiculous. 
and uh, you're open game. And it doesn't matter if you're on the left or if you're on the right. I don't care who you are. If you're an idiot and you do stupid shit, I'm going to bust you out. Yeah. Yeah. Who are your biggest detractors, men or women? Uh, Define detractors. People that don't like your content. Well, mostly women. Is that right? What, men, I mean, I when you look at my analytics, it's like 97% men watch my yeah. shit. Yeah. I have like 3%, very, very few women. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, I do get hate mail, but it, it is slacked off after I started doing shows about hate mail. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's all the same. Yeah. You hate your mother, you're gay, you can't get laid, and they never argue the point. Yeah. And they, don't, and they don't have anything other than anecdotes and emotion, and emotions change. Yeah. Logic and reason, and truth doesn't. All right. All right. All right well, thanks. Uh, a great chat. Thank you so much. Again, thank you very much. No problem. Anytime. <laughs>